Hello and welcome to Ray in the Bay. Today we're going to talk about scanners versus scope diagnostics. This story that I'm getting ready to tell is perhaps one of the biggest reasons that our scan tool have an extremely high first time fixed rate. A powertrain control module on any car newer than 1995 in North America and 2001 in Europe are OBD2 equipped. They have what I think of and refer to as two different computer rooms. There are actually two separate processors inside that box called the PCM. Also, two separate operating systems. Pay close attention to this next part. The rooms have two separate sets of specifications. One set of specifications in the OEM VIN specific room and the other in the OBD2 room. I'm talking about the specification window, the minimum, maximum for each parameter identification, or PID, P-I-D. One room could have the specification window set wider or narrower than the other room. Since these specs can be different from one room to the other, you could have a diagnostic trouble code, or DTC, in one room, and no code in the other. Well, what does that mean? That means we all should make a habit of checking for trouble codes in both rooms on all cars, always. It should be a standard part of your workflow. Here's why. Have you ever had a car come in and there's no DTC, no trouble code, but you have a check engine light on? Did you check the OVD2 room or just the OEM VIN specific room? This is a perfect real world example of the result of having different specs in each room. The OBD2 room is something went outside of the specification window and set a code, then turned the check engine light on. The PID that went out of spec in the OBD2 room did not go out of spec in the OEM room because the OEM specification window was wider and the PID stayed within specs. How much time would you waste if you did not check both rooms and the code was in the OBD2 room only? In fact, could the wrong part get replaced? Then you have a comeback on your hands, right? Or might you just give up and send the vehicle elsewhere? Now, if that happens, would you get paid? You know, if you think about this, you could have a DTC in one room and a different one altogether in the other. If checking both rooms is not part of your workflow routine, this scenario is a sure recipe for a comeback. If you go into the OEM room only, find a DTC, pinpoint the problem and make the repair, you may be likely to hand it over to the customer not realizing there's another unrelated problem that only the OBD2 room detected. It will be a comeback with the check engine light on for sure, won't it? The customer will think you repaired the wrong thing the first time. The only thing worse than a comeback is a never comeback. That could happen if the customer thinks you repaired the wrong thing and is willing to call it a loss and take it somewhere else. So we've talked about two rooms, specification windows. Let's stick with that theme and talk about doors. Actually, there is a front door and a back door. The back door is the process data outputs heading to the scan tool. So we now know, if you didn't know before, that there are actually two back doors. One door comes from the OEM room and goes to the scanner icon on the home screen. The other door comes from the OBD2 room and goes to the OBD direct icon on the home screen. I think of it as back door because raw data goes in the front door to be processed out the back door to help give us a direction as to where the problem might be. In fact, the scanner really is like a compass in that regard, isn't it? Front doors and raw data. I'm sure you've heard the term garbage in, garbage out. It typically is a term about computer inputs affecting the output results. That means since the PCM is a computer, actually two computers in the same box with inputs and outputs, I could definitely experience garbage in and garbage out, couldn't I? Since the garbage would be entering through the front door, that is where we would need to check if I were to suspect garbage was what I saw on the scanner from either room. Front door garbage is misleading raw data. It's a lie. So we need a lie detector at the front door, don't we? That's where a lab scope or meter would come into play. 
a scanner is a wonderful thing to point us in the right direction. Even if the data is not garbage, we would need to pinpoint the component or circuit, wouldn't we? Nathan Hirschbach is a valuable member of the Snap-on Diagnostic Team and a good friend of mine. He teaches that one of the differences between scanners and scopes is their refresh rate. He states that by the time scanner data is processed and makes it to the scanner display, it's in the past. It's history. Not to mention the refresh speeds are dependent on baud rates of the PCM, much slower than the scope. A high quality scope will refresh around 1.5 million samples per second. So the scope will see things the scanner is just not fast enough to see. So you will see real time data on the scope. If you are chasing an intermittent issue, it's more than likely you will have to use the power of the lab scope to find it. I asked Nathan what one of the things he liked best about our scopes. He said one of the most valuable time savers our scope offers is showing voltage over time. This allows you to get the time frame it takes the voltage to cross the screen as it is being sampled. If you are chasing an intermittent wiring issue, then you can have the scope connected to the circuit and set the sample rate to allow you the ability to work down the circuit and look back at the scope to see if there's any change in voltage in the circuit. If there is not, then you haven't found the issue. If there is, you go backwards on a circuit till you can replicate the voltage drop and now you've found the intermittent issue. If you're not familiar with using a scope, the Snap-on Guided Component Test will show you how to hook it up, where to hook it up, and what it should look like. In fact, there are over 7 million of these VIN-specific guided test now featuring many photo location helpers for where the components at. You know, my wife and I enjoy watching TV shows about law enforcement dating back to the days of Adam 12 and Dragnet. In 60 years of watching these shows, every time they're arresting a suspect at their home, they never go to the front door without telling their partner, go cover the back door, do they? If they didn't, the bad guy would escape. Same with the PCM. If we don't cover both doors, the problem could escape us. Wireless connectivity on the scanner side is very important in being able to cover both doors. The wireless scan module can stay in the vehicle retrieving backdoor data while the diagnostic tools under the hood or under the car tapping into front door data, checking for lies. Oh, I have some big news. Since checking both rooms are so important, 2010 and newer vehicles Snap-on tools check both rooms simultaneously during the pre-scan. We've also added permanent codes, mode 10, to the pre-scan. Have you ever had a vehicle? Someone else worked on it before you did? They probably cleared the codes. So what's next? Well, OBD2 permanent codes are codes that cannot be cleared by a scan tool, and they're going to remain in there for 400 days, or if the problem does not reappear for two drive cycles. What a great feature, OBD2, that prevents misdiagnosis. There are a lot of differences between a scanner and a scope, but what great partners they are when it comes to catching the bad guys. Thank you for joining me on another episode of Ray in a Bay.